talk about practice first of all, guys. Practice. Seneca, how's it been going on the uh, on the offensive side? What do you think about what you guys been doing out there? Uh, well, we're still installing, putting in new plays, uh, seeing what how everything's gonna fall out. So I think we should be good, and ready, getting prepared for the first game in two weeks. Yeah, what kind of? I know Coach likes to run the football. Is that sort of what you guys have been doing a lot in practice, running the football? Uh, yes. We have a f pretty fast offense. We like to keep the pace up. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, that sir. means a lot of blocking for you? Uh, yeah, somewhat here and there. Yeah. We got a couple deep plays, a couple deep shots we'd like to take yeah. here and there. Yeah. yeah. Brandon, what do you think from a defensive standpoint watching these guys? What do you think of the offense? Uh, we definitely brought in a lot of talent. A lot of talent and not always, always like, like even since last uh, last year, we they've always been fast. They push us in practice uh, with no huddle, and hurry up. So yeah, they I feel like they got right back in their groove and they're going to be even better than last spring. They like to run a lot of plays, huh? For sure. They get definitely. up off the ground in a hurry. Most definitely. Yeah. So what about the defense at this point in camp? What are you seeing from uh, your teammates? Uh, I'm seeing a lot of intensity, a lot of. Like eager to learn. Everybody on defense is eager to learn. Even the new kids that came in, they're so eager to learn and wanna they're always asking questions in the meetings and whenever we're um even going through plays on the field, they as soon as they come off the field they'll hit they'll go to coach. Hey coach, how was this or how was that or coach to coach them up. So it's just like a lot of learning and I will definitely be a lot better than last spring as well. Yeah, where where do you think you guys have made the greatest strides on defense? Uh I would say the greatest strides on defense definitely in our secondary. Um I feel we lacked a little in our secondary in the spring, but we've definitely made huge strides in our secondary this fall. Well, I mean, you know, looking at your, your stats from the spring, I mean, you gave up 36 points a game. Mm -hmm. So, But, I mean, look, that was your first time out. And you guys were really kind of relearning everything, weren't you, as a, as a team being at your first season playing together in a brand new program? True, yeah. We definitely gave up a lot of points, but it, and us being new isn't an excuse either. But – yeah, I just feel, but we definitely, um, like this fall, we're definitely improving and a lot better than uh, than the uh, spring. Can you cut that number in half? Uh, we want to do more than cut it in half. Like, we want to bring that number down <laughs> to 21 if we can. Yeah, yeah. Let's get some shutouts in there. Yeah, for sure. Most definitely. Uh, Seneca, you guys won your first game last year. Remember that? In the yes, spring. Sir. It was this year. What am I saying? You won your first game <laughs> ever. Since they restarted the program, I remember that. Um, and, and you came back and you had a little police escort in to do well. What was mm -hmm. it like on that bus ride back? And what was it like when you guys got back into town? Uh, it was just a different experience for everyone. Uh, going out there, winning our first game as a new program, it was just an experience that you couldn't even, words couldn't even explain. Everybody was happy. And uh, the escort was something special too because uh, a lot of people are not are not used to that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was special. Did you kind of feel like you'd won a championship or something? <laughs> yeah. The kinda, way they treated you? Yeah. <laughs> Felt like something that you would see on TV. Yeah. yeah. You would have thought a, we had a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then, unfortunately, that was the only game that you won. Yeah. yeah. But how do you feel, Seneca, about the competitive nature of the team throughout the spring? Oh, throughout the spring, oh, we're, we uh, always put up a good fight, come out hard, and – yeah, nothing's going to be easy going against us from start to finish. We're going to give it all we got, no matter the outcome of the game. Well, you know um, that next week you lose by one to Edward Waters, Brandon. Mm -hmm. um, and then you lose to Shorter uh, in a relatively decent game. Uh, Tusculum was too much for you. Newberry beat you soundly and, and uh, Fort Valley uh, down the stretch. So did, did, did you guys sort of wear down, you think, as the spring went on, or was the competition, were you just stepping up in competition as you went along? I got to say first that all our guys, we got so much heart. Those kids are young. Those kids are 18, 19. I'm one of the oldest on the team, and mm -hmm. those kids, we, all our kids were freshmen, and they were just so young, but they had so much heart. But I'll say that uh, a lot of, it was a lot of the wear and tear, like dealing with a season. Like we had so many injuries. We, we were down to our last, like, two running backs, one running back. So and our DBs were dropping. We only had like like two corners left, you know, so it was definitely definitely a lot of the wear and tear as well. So I wouldn't say it was just like them getting the best of us. We definitely we definitely pull up a put up a fight every game though. Like the first three we definitely should have won, but there's a lot of shoulda coulda would us, but um 
Yeah. Now, you seem older, and you look a little older. I mean, mm-hmm. are you older? Did you come uh, from somewhere else or before yeah. you came to Erskine? Yeah, I came from uh, junior college. I came from Iowa Central Junior College. I yeah. graduated from there in uh, December of 2019. Okay. Yeah, so. So you, you've, you've got a little uh, wear and tear on the tires, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. yeah, and I've been around a few times, so I know a lot more than some of the kids. So, Do, do you kind of feel like you have a leadership role on this team? Uh, for sure. And yes, what sir. do you do with that? Uh, I just really try to use my past experiences because I've definitely, like, I see a lot of myself in a lot of the kids. Like, because, like, I used to, like, not understand, like, coaching sometimes and, like, not take to authority as well. But, I like, I definitely see myself in some of the kids. And I just, like, I'll just tell them or just, like, give them, like, some examples of what I used to do and, like, what I should have did and what I should have did, like, what I should have did the right way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seneca, you came here from a really good football program at Ridgeview and a really good basketball program. You won a state championship there. Uh, how did winning that state championship in basketball maybe carry over with you to football? And uh, you know what it takes to win a championship. Can, are you able to share some of that with your teammates? Yeah, uh, basically, you just have to attack every day, every practice with a winning ment- mentality uh, going in. You can't have some days off. Some days on, some days you not feel like practicing, some days you do. You have to go in every day, giving it all you got. Uh, so it will carry on into the games and make it seem easy. So as you go on and keep winning, winning is a good feeling. Once you get your confidence, you're just going to keep winning and go up from there. You still got your jump shot? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. For sure. <laughs> you ever get to use it? Uh, nah, nah. Strict, <laughs> strictly football. Strictly football. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, you know, last time we were here in 2019, um, all of this was just talk. You know, it was more of a dream. It was on paper, and this is what we're going to do. And now it's here. I mean, you guys have a beautiful field house or whatever they call it, the football administration building. Uh, great weight room for this size program. you got your practice field right here behind you. Um, how do you feel about the steps they have taken here in such a short time since you got here? Oh, yeah. They uh, basically coming in. They told us the plan they had. We knew we had to lock in and trust them and see it through. So, yeah, we they kind of got it done within a couple of months. So when we went on that break and came back, everything was back. And we're just ready to go on from there. How about you, Brandon? As an older guy, seeing what they have built, what they plan to, to do with this program down the road. And, and you guys can look back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now and say you were mm-hmm. a part of the first group. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the coaching, the coaches, they're doing an amazing job at building a foundation, a foundation that we can teach the kids coming in now and those kids will teach the next kids coming in. So it just lays the groundwork for like what this program will be. Well, we wish you guys a lot of luck. Uh, a lot of we folks uh, keep it. an eye on Erskine because it's so new. And, you know, I see the commitments announcing for Erskine and then, you know, various pictures coming from the camp and, uh, Good luck this season. I know this will feel like a real yeah. – I mean, it was football for you in the spring, and you mm-hmm. had a lot of practices and games, but this will probably feel a lot more like football in yes, the sir. fall, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. I know I you guys that. are looking forward to it. Thank you very much for coming over, and good luck this season. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Okay, Seneca McKee and Brandon Lane, Seneca wide receiver, and Brandon, a linebacker, two of the standouts here for uh, Erskine and we thank them for coming over and joining us and it's good to see you once again I know we saw you a couple of years ago when this thing was just starting to come together and I saw this building I went wow I mean this is something you talked about from the get-go and it's here and it's very very nice yeah I, I actually I, I couldn't remember when you were here last and you're right we were yeah. just kind of getting I, mean, I think I was showing you pictures of what we were hoping to have so uh yeah no it's 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 come a long way and, and it we, may, we take, I don't know, baby steps, but we take steps every year. So, um, you know, those TVs hanging above your head, those, those are relatively new, those are new this summer. So mm-hmm. there's things that are happening, and, um, but, you know, we still have lots to do. So. Are you happy where you are? Not you personally. I'm talking about the program. Are you happy where you are at this stage? In I, such a, you're still in your infancy. I think so. I mean, I think spring showed our kids, our freshmen and redshirt freshmen, that guess what, you know, Football's still a big boy sport, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they had some opportunities to, to probably do some things. And when we didn't take advantage of those, then it came back and bit us later on. And um, you know you start playing more established programs, and 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 we kind of got punched in the mouth a little bit, and probably didn't have we didn't really have the depth that we needed to to you know to withstand the brunt of what we had to do in the spring. 
Um, I think this fall will be a little bit different. We're going to have some depth now. We're going to be still young, sure. but, you know, we're going we're gonna to be we're gonna be okay. So when they won the opener, your very first game of the restart of Erskine football, and they come home, they got the, the little parade and the police escort, and everybody's patting them on the back. Do you think maybe they thought, gosh, this is – this is going to be pretty easy. We can win some games here right away. You know, I, I probably a little bit. Yeah. Um, because I really certainly felt like that second game was a game that we we should have taken care of business and it and it and we started out sort of. But if, if you were there, you really we you knew we were still missing opportunities when we were even when we got up and then we kind of let it slip away. So I think there was a little bit of well, this college thing isn't that hard and. Uh, you know, I, I, I think the thing that they're figuring out is that, uh, you know, when you're playing kids that are two and three, four years older than you, two and three, four years for a college kid in the weight room mm-hmm. is a big difference than a high school kid coming out. And uh, hopefully they they took that to heart and hopefully they, they took care of business uh, this summer. What, so do you, we'll what, do you, what do you think you've seen the greatest improvement from the spring in camp this fall? Offense, defense, maybe both equally improving to your satisfaction? I think the, the biggest thing we've seen is that the, the freshmen, redshirt freshmen, are growing up. This is their third year here, and they're starting to actually look like football players instead of part of the cross-country team. I mean, they, I mean, they, look, <laughs> they look lean. And, uh, yeah. you know, so now they're actually starting to fill out and starting to look like football players. Um, you know, in, in a real program when you're not having to play freshman, if you're a lineman or something like that, you're not playing for two or three years. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't even sniff the field because you, you don't have the strength to, 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 to go toe-to-toe every snap and, you know, the knowledge. And so those are things that, you know, we still don't necessarily have some of the, <laughs> the knowledge, but we have – more, excuse me, more size and things like that than what we've had in the past. So yeah. it's, you know, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Our kids are starting to look more like college football players than, uh, you know, oversized high school players, I guess. <laughs> right. So, man, well, I, I mean, Brandon Lane, your linebacker, who was just here, now he looks like an elder statesman, and, and he looks pretty good, but he's an older guy that came from junior college. That's what you want those younger guys to kind of get to, you know, beards, <laughs> beards, you know, coaches yeah, used to tell me they like to see beards and butts, you know, especially on linemen. Beards I don't really and care about, you know, all the facial, whatever. But, I mean, yeah. the bottom line is yes. I mean, he's a – when you look at him, he looks like he's been in a weight room before. He looks like he – and he, the way he presents himself and carries himself, um, you know, you, you can tell he's just a little bit more mature. And um, and Lord knows when you're dealing with freshmen and redshirt freshmen, you could use a little bit of maturity. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the part that we – have to continue to hopefully grow. And hopefully this group that's now going to be in their third year here will display some of that. So, you know, hopefully they'll drag some of these younger kids along with them. How many are on your roster? And did you – have you had much attrition uh, over the last couple of years as maybe guys are like, eh, you know, I want to move on to something else? Or have you pretty much been able to hold it together? I would say that the reality of it is most of the kids that we are losing and have lost – in most cases, realize that college football, A, isn't for them. Yeah. Um, or B, they really they, – they, they either don't, don't want to work hard enough to be able to have, to have a chance to compete or they're not good enough to compete. And then I will say that COVID kind of took its, took its toll a little bit because, you know, you, you remove kids from class and a lot of times that, that's not going to be a, a positive result. So – uh, we we ended up losing quite a few kids last January, and, and in most cases, well, it was academic. Sure, it wasn't. Um, but I will say this also: in most cases, the players, the kids that came here that were players, the players aren't the ones that are leaving. So yeah, you know, you're happy with the group you've got back. The group we have back is are, are the kids, same kids that have been the kids that you thought were going to end up, you know, being the, you know, we're going to grow into becoming the players. And, and those kids are are doing that, and um, you know the the one thing I think that we are getting now is is a heck of a lot more competition, and we've got competition kind of across the board, and uh, we really some kids have kind of led a pretty charmed life here in the sense that they really weren't pressed and really didn't have anybody chomping at the bit. I don't think that's the case going forward. I think you know, and, and every year we keep recruiting at a, at a little different level, I think. And uh, 
So ultimately, we and I've said all along, this program is going to be successful when we have competition at all positions. We're still not there, sure. but we're getting a lot closer. Talking with Shep Boyd here at Erskine. So what's going on with your quarterback position here in the in the fall? Quarterback position is when we have uh, some talented kids. Um, you know, Craig Pender is a pretty good quarterback and, 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 and did a pretty good job for us last spring as a true freshman. So, I mean, he's somebody that – you know, it's going to be hard to, 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 to knock out. But you know what? We better have kids in there that are battling him and competing him or he's not going to be the player he should be. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, we need that at all the positions. So, um, but he's – he looks good. I mean, he, he's done some things to his body. To, you know, he, all freshmen have that little, you know, baby fat, whatever you want to call it. And then they go through that growth spurt and then they come back as sophomores and they're leaned up and they're a little bit more muscular and they've gone through a transformation. And, that, and that's kind of what a lot of those kids are, are have gone through. And, um, you know, he kind of fits that mold. 1,421 yards, eight touchdowns, four interceptions. And I remember when we first talked to you in 2019, your offensive mindset was, yeah, I'm throw the ball some, but we're going to run the football. I mean, you were going to build your offense around the running game. Were you uh, able to do that some in the spring, and will you do more of that here in the fall? Well, we really weren't able to do that, and and that's an area that we have to continue to, to work on to get better with. You know, we have to get better. Um, I say better. We, we, we It starts with just having some bigger bodies yeah. on both sides of the ball, yeah. both offensively and defensively, because the kids that we're playing against – our, our bigger bodies mm-hmm. and um, you know at, at times you get kind of manhandled so we've had to get an, and again our kids are growing the kids in the program are growing and then we have other kids that are coming in that are that are just bigger bodies so we're moving in that direction we're starting to recruit and starting to get those kinds of kids now we got to grow them up a little bit but uh, you know I, I think the progress that the kids that are in the program are making is is good and I think the recruiting process that we are going through the types of kids that we're pulling in at this point, you know, I think we're doing what we need to do. You know, it's not a recipe for instant success. If it, the only way you're doing that is to bring in a bunch of older kids, and we haven't been doing that. So, um, you know, these kids are going to take their lumps a little bit, but at some point those kids aren't going to be young anymore, and, and hopefully they'll be able to give out some lumps. Looking at your schedule, you open up at Catawba. On September 4th. Now, this you know looks like more of the schedule that you had in mind when this thing all started. Uh, Catawba, um, I'm just looking at a few of the other highlights. North Greenville, we were there uh, yesterday. They feel good about their team. Uh, Savannah State's on here. You got Newberry, um, Kentucky State. Um, you, you got some, you got some tough ones there up and up and down. And you got some games in there. I think that you can match up very well with too. So, I mean, how do you how do you see this schedule? week by week in terms of its uh, its quality? I think it's, you know, it's a good – I think we're going to be challenged by everybody we play. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I don't think we're um, sitting – we're not sit, I'm not sitting in the office saying, that's a W, that's a W. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think – don't you think some Flying Fleet fans are sitting out there going, okay. Oh, I'm you sure know. they are. I'm sure this they one, are. We, we should get you this know. one. We should get this one. <laughs> you know, I'm looking at it and saying, you know, we're going to have to play pretty well. Yeah. We're going to have to play – better than pretty well you know yeah. whatever so i think um it's it's a it's a it's a sketch i mean we're you gotta start somewhere mm-hmm. you know and, and spring was just off yeah. you know as, as much as it was our first attempt at playing football in 70 years um it just it was off i mean yeah. the weather was crummy i mean I don't have, you can have spring i mean yeah I, I don't care if we ever have to play spring football again Unless they build us a dome somewhere, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm all about fall and fall ball, and I I love fall ball, so I'm I'm good with that. Um, but uh, anyway, it, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So um, the COVID situation, everything's been pretty good with you guys. Have you had any issues with that? Do you have to take any particular protocols into consideration? Well, I mean, I mean, the whole world's changed there. To be honest, I mm-hmm. mean between, you know, people getting vaccinations and, and or not getting vaccinations. And then, but ultimately it's the same protocol. It's just that more and more people are, are trying to, to do things so they don't have to deal with a lot of that stuff. Um, but it, the protocols are the same. I mean, if you have COVID, you're out for X number of days. If you're around someone that has it and you haven't done the vaccination, then guess what? You're caught up like you used to get caught up. So. Yeah. You know, we're, we're learning how to deal with it better, yeah. and um, 
hopefully it's not going to be as big of an issue as it was last year. Thank you. It's always good seeing you. Glad to be back up here, and good luck to you this season. Appreciate it. Appreciate you all coming by. Always. And uh, we hope to see you during the season. That would be awesome. Thank you, sir. Shap Boyd, coach here at Erskine, back in a moment. 